We are now facing the greatest shift in industrial development. The fourth industrial revolution is here. It's transforming jobs, economies, and societies. It is disrupting every sector, changing how we live, work, and interact. The reality is, South Africa's economy is barely growing, and the jobs created are not enough to bring down the rate of unemployment. Hi, SKM. In today's episode, we look at how the digital world and the fourth industrial revolution is affecting the South African job market and if there's any solution to this. By the way, don't forget to hit the sub button and show some love with the thumbs up. There's a lot of buzz on how the fourth industrial revolution will make a lot of jobs disappear and South Africa is facing an alarming rate of unemployment for both skilled and unskilled labor. Things have not always been this chaotic for South Africa. In fact, it was once a great economy that the exchange rate against the US dollar was averaging around 0.87 cent per one US dollar. Political interference played a greater role, followed by the regime change, HIV and AIDS pandemic, corruption, and more. All of these events affected the lives of South Africans and more significantly, the economy. So, what is fourth industrial revolution? It is defined, and I quote, the fourth industrial revolution is a fusion of advancements in artificial intelligence, robotics, the internet of things, genetic engineering, quantum computing, and more. There are various definitions of fourth industrial revolution, but they all boil down to the use of data provided by humans to machines and the ability of these machines to understand this data. And there's an interesting definition from the Deputy President of South Africa. Now I'm called upon to define the fourth industrial revolution. Well, does this oh, mean you don't know the remember. answer? Please proceed. To well, be... the a revolution, a revolution in any given period, a revolution in any given period uh, is defined as the way we do things in that period. Now, the revolution here, if we are talking about a skills revolution, if we are talking about IT, if we are talking about technology, the, the essence here is that the way we, we do things, the way we produce in our economy. Different scholars may argue that South Africa has not yet reached the fourth industrial revolution era. However, we can all agree that it is affecting us more significantly the private sector, such as banks, telecoms, engineering, highly institutions, and more. The driving force behind the company's adaptation of the fourth industrial revolution is to maintain the global competitiveness business approach, despite a country of business not being ready for these advancements. No company wants to find itself in the shoes of Nokia or Kodak. However, are South Africans ready? And the simple answer is no. There are various contributing factors to the nation's readiness to take advantage of these advancements. The education system in the country contributes to the slow pace in innovation. South Africa has about 25,000 schools and from this number around 23,400 are public schools. According to Samson Ongonyemi, an economic, social, cultural researcher, close to 4,000 public schools still use Pitt's toilet system in 2020. The government is rolling out a program aimed at introducing robotics and coding from grade R. However, 72% of public schools do not have access to the internet, while 239 schools do not have electricity at all. This shows how government's plans are mismatched with reality and further creating an unequal education system. To top it off, the education system focuses on teaching children how to pass exams instead of thinking critically, creating new ideas and solving problems. 
this puts the country years behind the third industrial revolution. And yes, I mean the third industrial revolution. And I'm not very sure as a country, as a country whether we are in the third um, industrial revolution or whether the second industrial revolution. The delivery method in public schools is different from private schools. The standard of education was dropped further when the Minister of Education announced a 30% pass mark for basic education students. These are students that are going directly into training colleges to pursue opportunities in vocational training, as said by the Minister of Education and Training in 2014. By 2020, the same minister had a different tone towards career opportunities that these students must explore. Too many students rushing to cause that are of, to programs that we are not short of in South Africa, that are oversubscribed. And that is just breeding unemployment. And we are still, by the way, spending a good percentage of NESFAS money to support students who are not going to get jobs at the end of the day because they are in areas that are not in high demand. It becomes impossible to adapt to tech if you do not have the adequate resources and the telecommunication industry makes this even more challenging. What if you wanted to take advantage of the online opportunity? Well, there's a price of data to consider. Out of 58.8 million South Africans, only 1.6 million South Africans are subscribed to fiber services, leaving the rest to the insanely expensive mobile data plans. And only 24.5 million citizens use smartphones as of 2020. It would be a crime to finish this episode without mentioning the pandemic, which saw a lot of companies closing down. I was once recruiting for a particular bank when the pandemic hit South Africa, and I saw a drastic decline in vacancies available in other fields and a ridiculous increase in the amount of tech-related vacancies. It felt like the world had just changed in a matter of weeks. Companies had to retrench staff that was redundant and the old employees that were facing challenges to work during the pandemic. Systems in place had to be moved completely online to be accessed remotely. Automated systems implemented and the rest of the technologically challenged employees was history. Unemployment problems were not brought forward by the pandemic. In fact, in 2019, Standard Bank announced plans to close down 91 branches, which cut down 1,200 jobs. Of these 1,200 jobs, 526 were IT employees. The South African labor force is expensive. Companies are opting to hire foreign nationals over locals because they come with less involvement of unions, and companies can easily contravene labor laws, such as minimum wage, and hours of work. The labor also comes with disadvantages, that is adaptation to innovation. However, the expensive labor is a result of the high instability of the economy. Food is expensive, life is expensive. It makes it impossible for locals to live with a minimum wage. Unlike China or India, South Africans are not entirely fascinated by the world of tech. Despite being expensive, tech products do not sell very well in South Africa, and there's a narrow variety of products. If you ask any South Africans to name any brands of smartphones, they name Samsung, Huawei, and Apple. That's because these are the famous brands, while there are more than seven smartphone brands in the country. But the market also leans towards products that have a good reputation and do not want to take a risk exploring new options. Manufacturing companies have also pulled out of the country and those that make it back such as Nokia, Panasonic, JVC are only rebadged Chinese products. Matter of fact, Chinese products use between 70% to 100% imported materials, leaving local companies with a very low market share. The South African government views China as an ally and not a competitor, and this is becoming a big concern. By 2021, after the passing of Mr. Jackson Tembu, a Chinese-born citizen was appointed as a member of parliament to replace his position. This puts South Africa in a tight position to participate 
in the race to AI while heavily relying on Chinese technology. South Africa is unable to provide labor to be absorbed by the digital world. It is shocking that in 2021, government vacancies still require applications to be mailed in via post office when private companies have completely moved to emails and ATS recruitment systems. The fourth industrial revolution will be able to create more than 133 million jobs and unfortunately South Africa won't be taking a piece of this pie. For example, the South African Broadcasting Corporation, short named SABC, is unable to adapt to OTT streaming services to compete with the likes of Netflix and YouTube. Instead, it plans to charge consumers a licensing fee for using these services. In comparison, in India, OTT services created 2.36 million jobs by 2017, while Union in South Africa are fighting SABC for retrenching 300 people. From this, you can see that unions do not want to address the challenging landscapes of industries. Their goal is to keep employees employed in sinking industries. The same pattern of approach continues in other state-owned enterprises, seeing that ESCOM plans to charge a fee on consumers that use solar power energy instead of electricity supplied by ESCOM. This on its own prevents independent power suppliers to create an estimation of around 60,000 jobs in this sector. So now that you have an idea of what's going on in South Africa, so what really happened to jobs? As mentioned earlier, Standard Bank retrenched their IT staff, but hold on, aren't IT jobs future-proof? Well, not entirely. The fintech industry is growing and people in help desks, out of flash player developers, software support, SEO, QAs, and even the mostly used COBOL developers are being phased out for MA, AI, DL, cybersecurity, and other programming languages such as Java, Python, SQL, and more. Banks are taking an approach Capitech uses the one person does it all approach, where a consultant can perform different tasks and reducing the need to have more employees working in a single branch. Most of the jobs done by bankers have been moved to apps, so it was inevitable that Standard Bank would retrench to take advantage of the digital move. In manufacturing, between the years 2008 to 2020, about six car brands left South Africa namely Seat, Saab, Cadillac, Daihatsu, Citron, and Chevrolet. At the current moment, about 110,000 people are still employed in the motor industry sector. However, Ford, BMW, VW, and other manufacturers are battling with sales due to the pandemic, and we are looking about a loss of 1,000 jobs from BMW alone. Automation is also playing a major role in the assembly line, resulting in a less or rather a reduced requirement for labor. In other sectors, the tourism industry faces a challenge with the likes of Airbnb model business. Also, the BCCSA is killing jobs in the TV and radio industry by censoring creators, of which different platforms have moved to offering compelling content such as Netflix. There's an overall mismanagement of SOEs, which might take a whole different video to explain. The transport system is taking a hit. There's less people moving in the country, and those fortunate enough to have their jobs are buying houses because jobs are moving remotely. Now, does South Africa have a plan for 4IR? Well, it has a commission, not the Zonda Commission, by the Presidential Fourth Industrial Revolution Commission, which aims to achieve technological innovation to revolutionize manufacturing, industrial, and energy distribution. The same commission aims to ensure food and water security. And if you ask me, a Fourth Industrial Revolution Commission working on food and water security raises an eyebrow on what other departments are doing. So can we trust the government that ordered an ineffective, soon-to-expire vaccine to lead us into a fully digi 
tall future. Well, maybe. <laughs> In the recent years, citizens have requested the government to bring in young leaders in parliament, and we got one. And this is what he had to say in parliament. In this way, and as urban poet Kendrick Lamar says, we're going to be right, we're going to be all right. And furthermore, there was an outcry for a qualified member of parliament and we were presented with the most qualified member at the time, Dan Van Ryan. Unfortunately, he only served in that position for one weekend. From this aspect, you can already tell the government does not have the capacity to deal with future challenges. Changing leaders serves no real purpose. As it stands, the state is unable to provide labor to be absorbed by the digital world. So, what is South Africa's position in fourth industrial revolution? Well, in 2018, South Africa's partner in innovation, China, declared that by 2030, it intends to be the world's superpower for AI. By saying that, China intends to put billions of dollars into funding research institutions, changing the curriculum at schools. And if you understand this, China already knows that whoever wins the AI race, wins. And so far, China is winning the $170 billion 5G race, according to Bloomberg. The government is trying to find solutions to funding the tertiary education for low-income houses. However, companies are moving away from the qualification system. For example, Google, Tesla, Apple, Aniston Young, and more. AI is catching up with human creativity. 65% of unemployed South Africans have been unemployed for more than a year. And this means people are not just unemployed, they are unemployable. And this will get even worse under such circumstances where AI is challenging human labor. In conclusion, tech words and tech terms mean nothing until an average person can understand the terms. The country has the infrastructure, though not widely spread, to take part in the fourth industrial space, but we are not taking part, instead we are playing catch up with it. To be a tech nerd in South Africa is very challenging, more often it feels like you have to move outside, just as Elon Musk did. Now I have a question for you. How long will it take students who cross a river in Eastern Cape to attend a school? to join the fourth industrial revolution mission, the same way students in other provinces are doing. On a brighter side, Ford announced a 15.8 billion investment in South Africa to build Ford Rangers locally. Hopefully, this will create more jobs. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and comment below on how you see the future unfolds for South Africa. Catch you in the next one. Peace out.